Well, hello there, friends in YouTube land. We are back with the K2. I have uh, finished populating the board in the receiver section, and I've gotten up to the part where you begin the first alignments and testing of the receiver. So I've kind of set everything up here to try to capture this on film I, or digital. I have not uh, powered this up yet since I've put this back together. Oh. I always have my two meter radio going in the background. The uh, testing here is uh, starting out with the four megahertz oscillator calibration. And we have a frequency counter here. This is a Radio Shack one. I don't know if you ever, if you watch uh, Bill, uh, old 64 GOAT. He has one of these that he can't find. This is not his. I, I actually got this at a yard sale, believe it or not, at a very good price. Uh, but it's the exact same one he has uh, that he can't find, unfortunately. Uh, and I will verify with him. He, he said it was about 100 bucks. I didn't know they cost that much back in 1994. This had the original date on it. It was from 1994. It was purchased in Hudson, New York in 1994. It still had this, the, uh, the number for the store on it. And uh, it's this is a metal case. It's it's very nice counter. Anyway, you use the frequency counter to do this. So I have that set up, and I have an oscilloscope probe on it, and it has a setting for the probe on the counter, which I have set. The microphone here is in this jar because this is an omnidirectional mic, and I think instead of having it above me, if I talk at the mic, it's going to pick me up a lot better, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to read through this and just do it along. Uh, with you the first time. I have not done this yet. First time I powered this up since I put the rest of the parts in the receiver in the RF board. Here we go. Uh, so I have, uh, there's a frequency probe. I think I mentioned that in previous videos. You build that. It's part of the radio. It's plugged into the radio at the current moment. Plug the frequency counter in. Connect the probe to the PLL reference oscillator test point. And that's, uh, you can't see the inside. I'm not going to swing the camera back and forth. It's just a little, um, it's just a, a little yellow test point that's on the board. Using the menu set cal factor, then hold edit a second time to enable the counter. The counter should show a frequency of 1,000, no, 12,090 kilohertz, plus or minus 30. If it is 000 or rapidly changing and out of range, you could have a problem with your counter probe or the PLL reference oscillator. So that's step one. I have to first of all see if I can get this into the right mode of frequency counter. I haven't done this in a while. And this is hooked up to my new big power supply up on the shelf that uh, that I showed in a previous video up there that I got uh, the homebrew one that I bought off uh, John. So we're going to power it up first. Okay. Select Cal Factor, then hold Edit a second time. Cal Factor. All right. All zeros. The frequency counter is on. I think, yeah, you can see that in the camera, hopefully. And you can see my meter over here. So. I'm not using this meter yet. I'm using the, the radio itself. We hold this to the test point and see what we get. 12099.41. It's slightly off. Instead of, point, instead of 90, it's 99. But that's okay because I think you can uh, you end up fixing that. It's at least it's not all zeros. Okay. I'd say t and it's actually it's plus or minus thirty kilohertz. I said that, so we're good. We're good. So that's good. Okay. Use one of the following methods to adjust C twenty two on the control board listed in the order of preference. Connect a calibrated external frequency counter probe. Whether this is calibrated or not, I don't know. It's it's Radio Shack, but hopefully it works good. To TP3 without removing the K2's internal counter probe. So you got to have both probes on there. 
Adjust C22 until K2's reading matches the external counter reading. Okay. First, I got to find C22 adjustment on this board. I'm going to need a small, skinny screwdriver that's going to fit in that. Tr it's a very tiny trimmer cap. And that screwdriver fits it. Okay. I'm going to back up my mic so I have room to work here. We still have everything in the shot. The radio is a little skewed at the moment. kind of have it up on this old insulator so you can get the right angle. Okay, now connect a calibrated probe to TP3 without removing our, the probe. Right, we have to use both probes to the same spot. Adjust it until the reading matches the external counter reading. Oh, it doesn't tell you what it's supposed to be tuned to. I assume 1290. Alternatively, blah, 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 blah. Okay. This is the preferred method, and I'm going to use this method. I just want to make sure I'm on. That's just my uh, local repeater. Somebody's kerchunking the repeater. They're hitting their uh, push to talk on the radio and making the repeater make noise. The challenge here. And I don't even know if I can do this on camera. I have to hold th two probes in one spot, and they don't stay there. They don't snap in. It's a little metal thing you got to just touch it to. Two probes to one spot, and a screwdriver on the trimmer cap while looking at the front of the radio. Okay. If I put the one on the radio up to a 6, the Radio Shack one is still moving between a 4 and a 5. I got a steady 9.4 to 9.5 on both of them. Or four on here, see? Yeah, it's it's bapping the back to four here. That's pretty steady there, four seven, four eight. This is going four to five, so I think that's pretty darn close. I'm gonna leave it. I could get out my other signal generator, but that will involve a bit of work. I'd like to know which one's more accurate though actually. I'm going to I'm going to stop the video here, get out my other signal generator and be back. All right. The other counter is here under my arm. Hard to read on camera, but it's it's point it's 99.37 and 38. The 7 and it does have the the last digit the same as the radio. The 7 and 8 this is 37 and 38. And this is reading 4.8, so this is significantly different. And I have no idea if this thing's calibrated. This is actually a counter that's a um, uh, part of a uh, test set for calibrating pagers, believe it or not. They were, there was a guy selling these once on eBay about a few years back, and um, I happened to pick one up. But anyway, I digress. I'm going to, I have it, I don't know what to think though, because this one is reading significantly lower than the radio. My radio is at 0 0.48 to 4.9 on the end two letters, and this is 0.38. So I'm going to try to tweak it and see what happens. And I'm probably going to block your view. I don't have a lot of choice. I guess I'm feeling like the one on this that I'm using now is 
as the external is more accurate, more than likely, than the uh, Radio Shack. And the, the thing I like about it, it has the extra digit. All right, I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta reset the menu because I hit a button and threw it off. I'm gonna stop. All right, that was a bit of a palaver, as my friend Ray would say in the radio workshop in England. Um, I finally found a jeweler's screwdriver that fit it better. I forgot I had it. It is 99.423. It's flipping back and forth between a 2 and a 3 on both my external counter and on the counter on the radio. That was a pain to get that. I did find, which I shouldn't surprise me, um, pressure on that little variable capacitor changed it. So I had to be really, really careful how much pressure to put on it. But we're right there. They're Both of them are flipping between a 2 and a 3 on that last digit. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, and we'll move along to the next area. I don't, I'm going to edit this down. I don't know how much of this you'll actually see. But... Next, we will be doing a uh, the PLL reference oscillator range test. Time is 7 PM. So that will probably be on the next video I'll post. 73.